Well, I approached coming on to this film, I think, with great reverence uh, and with the need to get it right. And I think that the commitment is here uh, in all quarters of the filmmaking uh, collective. We want to represent this um, murder in its proper context and we want it to be understood as the seminal moment in American history that it was, and certainly to demonstrate the continuing resonance of this brutal moment in our history. Dr. Theodore Roosevelt Mason Howard was an unsung hero of the Civil Rights Movement. He was born in poverty in Kentucky, he miraculously made his way to California where he studied medicine. He was a brilliant student. He then went initially to Nashville and then eventually to a place called Mound Bayou, Mississippi, which black people had built during Reconstruction as an all-black town. And Dr. Howard immediately energized Mount Bayou, built a hospital, a beautiful home, an Olympic-sized swimming pool for the entire community, the first swimming pool, in fact, for black people in Mississippi. He had a farm. He had a zoo that he built for the children, a park that he built for all the people. Um, he had a life insurance company and one of his employees was a young man out of Alcorn A&M College, a young graduate by the name of Menker Evers. He was, of course, an, a mentor to Menker Evers, as he was to Fannie Lou Hamer, and eventually to Jesse Jackson after he moved to Chicago in 1956 where he lived until his death in 1976. Dr. Howard, although he was a distinguished uh, physician, had a brilliant sense of humor and a very keen sense of self-defense. He believed in armed self-defense. He never went anywhere without a gun uh, out of reach. And he was a bodyguard for Mamie Bradley when she came down for the trial of the men who had allegedly, and then of course, certainly, uh, murdered her son because they admitted that they had done so in an interview with Look Magazine after the trial in which they were found not guilty. So Dr. Howard, um, certainly made his mark and he paid a great price for that. He had established a number of businesses obviously, had built up a community, but the threats against his life became unbearable and he left in 1956 just a year after these events and went to Chicago.